Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, let's talk about some of the reasons for Apple app rejections. All right, so earlier today, I got a phone call from someone asking for help with their iOS app submission. They called up and said, Eric, can you help me out? I submitted my app to the App Store and it's, it's been rejected. I don't know what to do. So I was like really busy at the time and I said, well, we can schedule some time, but I really don't have time to look at this. Said, Eric, please help me out. So I said, okay, tell me, what is, what is the rejection? Quickly tell me. And they said, it says metadata rejected. And I was like, oh, dude, is that all? Metadata rejected? Psh just change it, right? Because there's two types of rejections you can have on iOS, or at least two types that I've, I've had in the past, which are metadata rejected and binary rejected. Metadata rejected is something wrong with the description or the title or the, or the screenshots, and you just need to fix that, and you don't need to upload a new build, or you have to use the build that you're doing, but whatever, and then you have binary rejected, which means there's something wrong with the app and you have to fix it. Could be a bug, could be the whole concept of the app. So it could be something more serious, but it's more work if it's binary rejected. So anyway, I said, oh, it's metadata rejected. Just do whatever you have to do. He says, what do I have to do? I said, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have time. So, so anyway, I felt a bit bad about that. So I thought today we'll talk a little bit about iOS app submissions. We talk a lot about Google Play on this channel, but we don't talk a lot about the App Store. So over the course of my app development, so my first app I released in 2012, which I know there's people who've done them far before that, the App Store submission process has changed a lot. It used to be like, it used to take like 10 days to get an app approved, or we would tell clients 10 days, but sometimes it'd be six or seven. Like if they did it in six, we'd be like, oh, that was early, right? And now it's usually done in an hour. So, or sorry, not an hour, but in a day. It's usually done within a day, sometimes two days, which is really good. They've gotten much better at it. The difference between Google Play and Apple is that Apple has a reviewer that approves every single app submission. So that's time consuming, but they're getting a lot more efficient with it. So, and one of the struggles we have is with, with app submissions and rejections and things like that. And, and a re app rejection is just a part of life, right? We've had an app just recently, which we released for a client. We released the app, they found a spelling error in it, so we released the update, then they found another spelling error in it, and then, so we released a third time, and the third time it was rejected because the reviewer didn't have enough information to test the application, even though nothing had changed. So it's always going through a different reviewer and it's just one of those things, right? You just do what the reviewers want, you know, and, and nobody gets hurt, right? So have a look at my screen here. So I want to talk a little bit about, I was just looking at some of the statistics on app reviews and it's, it's really pretty uh, interesting. For, I mean, for those of you guys who do iOS and iOS, I've been speaking to a lot of people lately who are doing really well on the App Store, uh, you, whereas you know, a lot of us are moving to Google Play, Google Play or Android has like 80% market share, but the money's still being made on iOS. And people I think are, are willing to pay more for in-app purchases. Well, I know that they're willing to pay more for in-app purchases and purchases, but so it's something you might want to consider as an app developer if you're not going on the iOS side. But it's a big investment because you have to get the Mac, or some way to build the application. You need a, a, a test phone for testing, all that kind of stuff, but maybe it'll work out for you. So have a look at my screen here, right? So there's a this really good page here on the Apple website about their app review information. So I was looking at this and it turns out that they, over here they say that 40%, where is it? Yeah, on average, 50% of all apps are reviewed within 24 hours and 90% are reviewed within 48 hours. So this is like way different than it was before. They're obviously getting much more streamlined on it. If you get an app that's rejected, you can pretty much turn it around and, and submit it again. Unless it's something like a 4.3 error or something to do with the content, that could be a real nightmare. And when people keep saying, what do I do? They've been rejected, what do I do? The only thing you could do is just keep asking questions. What do I need to change? What, can I get a phone call? Make sure you get the reviewer to give you a phone call, right? So, and usually when you submit your app to the app store, it goes into an in, it goes to a waiting for review, then in review, and then ready for sale. Unless you've set it to manual, then it will go to pending developer release. We've done it all the different ways, uh, and then you can get it rejected. And there's some. So this page talks about some of the big things that they rejected for. So we've pretty much got all of these done. You know, broken links. 
We've had, well, we've never done broken links, but we have had crashes and bugs. So I, in the past, I hate to admit that I have released an app where I've only tested in the simulator. So I didn't experience any crashing or any memory issues once you get it onto a phone with limited memory. It works fine on a Mac where you've got all that disk space, but once you get it onto the phone, you know, the app would crash. So I've had apps rejected for that. I've had apps rejected because I just quickly put them up there and then they caught them. So in a way, it's really saved me a bit having the reviewers catch this kind of stuff, but it's not really their job. It's just, you know, it was me being lazy and putting something through. It was basically one of my own apps. Right, but uh, so requesting permission, all these kind of stuff. So it's it's really good. But he says forty percent of top app rejections are guideline two point one, which is an incomplete app, which means you have links that don't go anywhere, or you'll have placeholder data, or you'll have something that just doesn't have a full app. Now I remember uh, working someplace where they release an app to the app store, and they get getting it rejected because it said it was only marketing purposes. So it was it didn't perform like an app. It performed like a website. So it was like just something about their company and had an about us page and uh, just, just it was basically their blog or their, their website in an app. And that's the kind of thing that Apple doesn't want there either, right? They don't want these marketing type things. They want something to be there. So, you know, and all this kind of stuff, inaccurate screenshots. Just two days ago, we talked about screenshots. I said, you could put like background images on there. You could do something else. And they do talk about it. I used to always think that you weren't supposed to put text on the screenshots, but even says right here, you can use text and overlay images to highlight your app's user experience, but not to obscure it. So over here, they've got these really bad example where they've got just the app and then they've got the, um, the app with the, uh, the new in front of it or with the background and everything. And it's really this, covering the app screen that they don't want to happen. And I've had it rejected before. I've had apps rejected because our, our mock-up screen uh, device was an Android device and they, they picked that up right away, the, the size of the home button and all that kind of stuff. Incomplete information, substandard user interface, all this kind of stuff. And a lot of this can be really unclear but once, you, but once you have a good understanding of this, you can try to anticipate it. I know it says you know, one of the things to prepare for it, read the App Store guidelines. I don't know anybody who's ever sat down and read all the App Store guidelines. It's actually not that much, but it's, it's, a lot of it could be open to interpretations. We had, uh, we've had client apps that have been rejected because of content, so we had to go through and completely rewrite things. Uh, and it's really, really difficult when you get in a situation like that. So anyway, I wanted to go through the process. Uh, for me, like I said, I get, I, our apps get rejected probably about 30% of the time. Most of the time, it's just like a simple, like give us a bit more information. We can't test this properly. We need a, we need a different login or we're not sure how this bit works. And no, it's, it's not like a rejection, like no, this can never go live. It's just like, we need more information before we can approve it. It's just, it's that harsh sounding rejection. So, um, so let me know for you guys, those of you guys who are iOS developer, what is the percentage of time that your apps get rejected? Do you find the review process easier now than it was before? For me, it's a 4.3 still gets me, right? And I need to go through and, and combine all my apps in the container apps, which it talks about in this document too. But you know, what kind of, what percentage of times do you get rejected on the Apple App Store, right? Because Google Play is always pretty easy. If you get rejected on Google Play, is you're just gone. So anyway, that is it for today. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow.